streets beat me up. I went from the top to the bottom. My world was crazy. And I was lost. Sometimes you look in the mirror and you really say, is this me? Is, am I real? Is this existence real? You really want to die. So you got to really look at yourself, no, this too will pass. This too will pass. The unknown is the scariest thing for you. They're gonna think, they're gonna act like TV told them or A&E where they play all the jail joints. So I gotta act like that, cause that's what they put on the camera. So we break all those myths. Well, my name is Antonio Fernandez. Uh, right now, who am I? I'm right now a, a father, a, a husband, and a, and a leader of a, a new initiative called um, Credible Messenger on the Grow Up Grow Out is my small business. But uh, my, my greatest brand seems to be the King Tone. Tony, or King Tone, is the former leader of the Latin Kings, the largest Hispanic street gang in the United States. I became a big time drug dealer, then I became a base head, a crackhead, and I was lost. And then they put me in Rockers Island. Around 87, this old school king named Mafia, and they were fighting for the rights of Latinos and the Puerto Ricans in jail. And you know, and fighting the oppression. We don't got a phone, we don't got... And he talked to me and he grabbed me and said, yo, man, you, you, you a troublemaker and you're real stupid. And I was like, yo, who are you thinking? But I always seen the unity that the Latin Kings had in jail. Then he said, Hey, I want, I want you to learn something. He said, we're gonna teach you that you're somebody. A gangster, not the Marines, not the Boy Scouts, came to my worst moment and said, let us help you save you. <laughs> What's that right there? Who are you trying to get down? Now Tony is the one doing the saving. Oh, you're just starting and it comes. It's coming out of your imagination. He leads a team of ex-felons called Credible Messengers, part of Washington, D.C.'s restorative justice program. What you writing there, but for real? Where we at? The crimes they've committed include stealing, drug dealing, and murder. Some are being charged as adults. You wasn't an adult. They, ne they ever put you through the adult job? Credible messenger is usually someone who lived the lifestyle and experienced it that has truly been rehabilitated by himself and his actions that wins him the right in the community to speak up and to guide these kids. They become the voice of reason and telling them, son, I was, I'm a Latin king for 32 years. And if you still, you can stay a Latin king, but you better leave that criminal behavior because this is where it leads to. And I'll show you, and I'll tell you, and I'll draw the picture for you, because I've done it. And the kid usually listens. And he goes, oh. And it gives him a little hope to, to figure out how to avoid what I didn't. Which was your favorite class in here in the, in the school? In the school. Ah. And that's what we teach the kid. How to recreate himself. How to get this poison out of his system and then understand that he could be somebody regardless where he's at today. But I always see in their eyes, right? When they go, they look at the corner and they go, that's my old G. That's my original gangster because he doesn't feed me garbage. He tells me the truth about this stuff and I don't bother talking unless I gotta get something done. That's healthy respect because you could use respect in the street too, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's unhealthy. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, see. Now you're seeing the other side of respect. There's honesty that you give it to dude that you, they say they're gonna be honest with you and then what they do in the street. 
because honesty is different in the street than honesty at home, you get it? Three years ago when I first started, I thought myself as their counselor. They just changed the laws. When I started and growing, grow up, grow out and following them and following their problems, then I felt like a big brother. Because I don't look like a gang leader. Come on, if you see me in Walmart, you would not be scared that I bust your damn head. Because I don't look like a gang leader no more. I don't talk like him no more, I've changed. So when they see me, they laugh at that because they go, look at this old man trying to be a gang leader. Trying to tell me he was that gangster one day. You can see they learned. You don't get where I'm going? So first I was the other to them. Then I became their friend because they started calling what DC, the girls in them, they call you their twin. They used to say, Tony's my twin. That's the biggest, highest regard a DC kid could give you. I'm a third generation Puerto Rican. And we lived in East New York, Brooklyn, which in the 70s and 80s was the capital of murder, of hopelessness. It looked like it was the war zone in World War II that they came and dropped the bomb there and everything was burned and broken. It was a poor neighborhood and, 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 and it was hard. And we invented our economy. So I see the reflection that 1970 ain't that much different from 2019 in a poor neighborhood. So I see that in them. I see how poverty is a crime, how it makes the young feel inadequate and not able to meet his goals in the patient way the Americans teach. I don't know the faith. I mean, it's a lot of hurt. I've been through and people have been through through life struggle. So it's just based on it's it's, it's real life. It ain't it's, it's real. I had 13 and a half years. And the first years was the hardest because I couldn't see the end of the tunnel. But this credible message just shows him the light. He says the tunnel is there and this too will pass. And this is how we made it through. And this is how we went, did our time, went to school, went to the law library. We jogged, we did our workouts. You mind your business. Poke your chest though, keep your chest poked out. You don't gamble, you don't use drugs. Use the phone only when there's an emergency. Always tell your mother everything is all right. That's what we do, we prepare them to know this too will pass. The idea for Grow Up, Grow Out came to Tony during several years in solitary confinement. It was a perfect three years to fix myself. Without the voices, without the interruption, take what people said was a great leader and all my traits and sharpen them to the point where I knew the next time I wouldn't come back. So I, I wanted really to rehabilitate myself and I started going to school college, you know, studying books, reading, and I read Gandhi. I read uh, Martin Luther King's actual transcripts. So I started studying nonviolent people and movements because I was into it, but I really didn't explore those great men who tried it. And then I also love Malcolm, the famous Malcolm X. And I love Martin Luther King and Malcolm because they were two different whole philosophies of how to empower people, but they led to the same goal the freedom of their people. At-risk young people in Tony's program attend classes and job training. They also have the option to take a test to get their high school diploma, like 17-year-old Amaru. They told me more about being a man. Respect on another level. They told me like accountability, responsibilities. And they told me like even though I did some stuff, it's not nothing to glorify. Cause they don't even glorify these things. They let us know it's a bigger picture. There's many measures of success for me of how to do. Some are, are, are greater with freedom and and they're working now. 
Some of my kids' successes, we got a good rate of getting them their high school diplomas in New Beginning. So when we, we take them out of the jail into a graduation in the community, these are jail kids, and we graduate them and they march down and we have the parents there and we treat them like they were in their damn high school. You see what it says down there? Respect, honor. And that's success for me. When you see the kid finally shake it off, when they stop and they finally realize, I've been doing this all wrong. <laughs> Programs want to teach why they're oppressed or they committed violence. You lost on both ends. You can't talk to me while I'm hungry, while I'm lost, while I'm high, while I'm in the gang. I'm oppressed. Then when you listen and you see them calm down and you talk and you let them talk and they get tired and they open their eyes, they go, Tom, what did you say? And then I teach. So these are the, the, each one of these is two units. So there's six together. A space like this helps them think through this situation, be it they're guilty, they're not. We give them a place where they got a safe space to think and not keep fighting each other and hating each other. And they can make amends with their own community and some of their foes and start this next life with, with, you know, accepting responsibility and forgiving each other. It's in these group meetings where the credible messengers share the realities of being in prison. I just want you to be really prepared for that, to understand ain't nobody gonna feel like they owe you nothing for doing this bid. P.O. will piss you 245 times. You will give him a clean urine 245 times. The 246 you pee it dirty, he will lock you up. He won't remember a damn clean urine. The first mistake is what they remember you by. The last one, they go, Shh, you see, there he go again. Five years clean. My I feel none of my kids are bad or are the mistake they made. That's on us. That's on the grown-ups. That's on the community. We failed them in some way that made them end up where they are. So what I teach them one is that they're not hopeless. I teach them that oppression usually leads to aggression and it leads to violence. And the reason you're so mad and violent is because you've been oppressed for such a long time. You were born somebody naked. You were great without shoes, sneakers, or shirt without Jordan on your feet. Your mother loved you like you were the stars in the heaven. And I bring that back to their reality, that they're special and we owe them. And that's our fault. We're not listening no more to you. Our motto is, what does love look like in public policy? But really, you gotta keep thinking, I wanna go home. That's all I want. Never stop wanting to go home. Never stop thinking of freedom, bro. Your kids have lost their way from home. So that's what we teach to bring them back home. That's my love. You know, you, you're rich. You're more richer than you ever know. Freedom is not overrated. <laughs> You're not free, but you're alive. You're alive, you could win freedom. That's one thing you can't let them take from you. Man up. Man up for another day. Cause they ain't gonna break me, Tone. They ain't gonna make me cry. They ain't gonna make me break down and act like I'm crazy. I'm going home, son. You got me one more day. <laughs>